Good morning, and I guess afternoon, everyone. We are just super excited to have you all participating in Keela's three-day virtual conference that we're calling Plugged In. Uh, before we begin this session, I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping details with you all. So the first is that this session will be an hour in length, including about a 10 to 15 minute question and answer session at the end, and then we'll also try to answer some questions throughout the presentation as well. Um, we encourage you to ask questions in the Q&A box throughout and like I said we'll get to them um, periodically throughout. Um, all sessions will be recorded as well and you'll receive the recording along with the slide deck by the end of this week. Um, all right so with that I'd like to introduce and extend a huge warm welcome to four amazing speakers who were supposed to present together at N10's NTC conference this year that was unfortunately cancelled um, but instead they've generously offered to lead the session online with you all today. Today. So with that, I'd like to welcome Julia Campbell, who is a social media and storytelling strategist, Nick Byrne, who is the founder and CEO of GivePanel. We have Maureen Wal Walbiuf, who is a digital strategist and technology coach. And we also have Lon Freetag, who is from Children's Cancer Research Fund. They'll be speaking on the best kept secrets to getting and using Facebook fundraiser data. And with that, I'll pass it off to you for. Excellent. Thank you so much. We are so excited to be here. This is Maureen. I am going to share my screen right now. Oh, Zoom. We're all living in you right now, aren't we? Okay. And let's start the show. All right. This is a slightly shortened version of the session that we had planned to present um, in Baltimore to all of you. We have had so much fun putting it together. We've all learned a lot. Can't wait to share this all with you today. As you've seen, um, this is who we are. I'd love for all my co-presenters to say a little hello. Nick, you want to do a little intro? Sure. Hi, guys. Um, calling in from the UK here, uh, where we are locked down. Uh, so uh, hello to everyone. And uh, yeah, I'm the CEO and founder of a tool called GivePanel. It's an online platform that helps nonprofits manage their Facebook fundraising data. Thank you, sir. Julia, how about you? Hi, I'm Julia Campbell, and I'm north of Boston, and I'm a social media, digital marketing, and digital fundraising strategist for nonprofits, and really happy to be here. Thank you. Lon? Hi, I'm Lon Frite, the Community Fundraising Manager at Children's Cancer Research Fund. Um, CCRF is a national nonprofit contributing about $170 million to research, education, awareness, and quality of life programs for pediatric cancer families. Lon, you are the superstar of the show today. Can't wait to hear more from you. And I'm Maureen Walbioff. I'm a nonprofit digital strategist and technology coach. Like Julia, I'm in Massachusetts, but I'm out on Cape Cod. And Massachusetts, I would say, is fairly locked down right now. So I hope everybody's able to stay hunkered down. Here's the agenda that we'll be going over with you today. Facebook fundraising at a glance, why it's a real game changer. And that's not hyperbole. We really do think that this is a game changer for nonprofits. We'll have Lon share her story, a big story of success, working on a pilot to do um, data collection and some enhanced interactions with her Facebook fundraisers. I'll spend a few minutes helping you talk about getting your organization on board. What do you take back to your leadership, your managers, um, your president or uh, executive director about taking some action here? And then Julia and um, Nick will share some super secret tips and trends for 2020, and we'll do some open Q&A. So if you've got questions, please use that Q&A box. We'll be monitoring it and pausing throughout with um, time at the end for more. Julia, let's go. <laughs> Thanks, Maureen. So I'm going to set the stage today and I, I'm really sad that we can't do this in person um, at the Nonprofit Technology Conference, but this is really the next best thing. So thanks again to Keila for organizing this. Um, I'm gonna set the stage for you as to 
what we mean by Facebook fundraising. So what Facebook fundraising is and what Facebook fundraising is not. And then I'm going to go over a glossary of terms and just make sure everyone is on the same page as we go forward. So what I've seen in my experience with my clients and what I've seen as a trend in the sector is that Facebook fundraising is about your donors. It's not about you and it's not really necessarily about you controlling the situation, although there are ways that you can do it, but it's a perfect way, especially now that we're all so connected and relying on our phones and we're relying on social media, we're relying on digital channels to get people to support your cause in the ways that they want to support you. So they want to start a birthday fundraiser or they decide, I really want to do something in my community right now. I'm seeing a need. I want to help the food bank and I want to start a community fundraiser. And of course, it's a chance to leverage that network, leverage that social media community. And Nick's going to talk about the social graph, but you're putting so much effort into building your own personal network. And the way I see social media, social media is a way for us to create our own narrative and to share our own story. And everything that we share in social media reflects our worldview, our values, our ethics, and what we stand for. So if we're raising money on social media, it's sort of a perfect reflection of what we're already doing. And we're already inspiring people to come to the side of a cause that we really care about. It's also an opportunity to democratize philanthropy. So I think on a grander scale, you know, we are seeing small dollar donors disappear. So clearly all of the donor data that was collected in Q1 of this year, it's going to look very different in Q2 for forces beyond our control. But small dollar donors are disappearing. They're opting out and major gifts and all, you know, bequests and things like that are definitely increasing and picking up the slack a little bit. But I don't want to see don't I don't want to see philanthropy just to be the playing field of the wealthy. I really want to see it be the little guy, the someone that has $10, $20, $100 to give and to use it as a way to express what they care about and to show their networks what they care about. So I see Facebook fundraising as a way to kind of level the playing field and get more people involved in philanthropy and giving, not just saying, oh, that's for Bill Gates, that's you know for Warren Buffett. So if you're using Facebook fundraising, you know, if you're setting it up correctly and you're leveraging the tools, it really can look like magic money. And, you know, Nick is going to give you the strategies and Lon's going to give you a case study of how they did it strategically. Um, but it really can be this force to bring in these non-discretionary funds that we all are looking for. So the top questions that I usually get from my audience Number one, where can I find new donors? Because our donors are, are getting older. Um, our donors, you know, we can't rely on older donors as much. And number two, how can we um, get in front of brand new people, not necessarily donors? How can we increase visibility and increase awareness? And Facebook fundraising is really the perfect way to do all of those things. So Maureen, next slide, please. There's some things to understand about Facebook fundraising, however, um, when talking about what it is not. So it's not a great way to build your donor file because we're talking about social donors and third-party donors that are giving to causes. They're not giving to the cause, they're giving to their friend or their family member's birthday fundraiser. So we have to really create this mindset shift around what it's good for and what it's not necessarily good for, but that's not really the point. So these people are gonna have a different relationship with you. Some of them might give you their contact information. Most of them will not. We're gonna talk about ways you can get the data and ways you can thank and stay in touch with your fundraisers, the people actually raising money for you. But we all need to get over this mindset block, this limiting belief, if you will, that we can't use Facebook fundraisers just because we can't get in touch with every $5 donor that gives to Susie's birthday fundraiser. That's besides the point. So we all have to kind of get over that. And it's not a regular monthly giving platform. You can make monthly gifts, 
via the site, but it's not to be, it's not to be thought of, you know, kind of in that way. All right, next slide. The glossary of terms that we're going to talk about today, Facebook is obviously the company that owns and operates several different platforms, Facebook, Instagram. We won't talk about um, the Instagram donation sticker today. We might touch on it a little bit, but any social fundraising um, asks that go through the donate button on Instagram, the donation sticker on stories, the Facebook donate button, Facebook birthday fundraisers, any way that you can donate via those two platforms, that is what we mean by Facebook fundraising. The fundraiser is what we are focusing on today. So a fundraiser means the actual campaign that someone is running and then also the person doing the fundraising. So if I donate my birthday or if I decide wow, I'm really going to raise a lot of money for the local museum in my community. I'm the person that's doing the fundraising. So I'm the fundraiser in that case. And then the donor, anyone that would give money, press the donate button, give 20 bucks, give 15 bucks because I asked them to. The page fundraiser, that's the campaign. So that's where all of the information, including how long the fundraiser is going on, the goal of the fundraiser, the story of the fundraiser, and then that's going to be kind of the hub of information on Facebook, and that's where people are really being driven to. So that's not your fundra that's not your Facebook page, your nonprofit Facebook page, but it's linked to your organization. Um, and then Give Panel, we're going to talk about um, some ways that you can really collect the data, but. Give panel is a fantastic way for you to really strategically see who's raising money for you and contact them in a really cost-effective way. We'll talk much more um, about all of that. So the next slide, this is my last slide and I'd love to take some questions um, if we have any yet. So to prevent these common struggles, there's really, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of myths and misconceptions about Facebook fundraising. There's also a lot of skepticism. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of things that are unknown or that organizations are, are worried about losing control of the fundraising process. They're worried about not getting information. They're worried about donor data. So what we're gonna talk about today is the plan to engage your Facebook fundraisers. So we don't want you spinning your wheels and trying to contact every little person that's donating the $5. Not that I don't think those people are important. I love those people. I think they're amazing. But you're a small organization. You have limited time and limited resources, and you need the biggest bang for your buck. And in terms of Facebook fundraising, it's creating that relationship and engaging your Facebook fundraisers. And then you also need to know exactly what kind of data that you need to really create your plan, not only to convince your board and convince the higher ups that this is working, but also to make it sustainable. So you're doing it year after year after year. This is not something you turn on and just simply kind of let go and then expect it to continue to raise money for you for years and years and years without doing any work on the back end. So you do still have to be a traditional fundraiser. It's all about relationships. At the end of the day, fundraising will always be about humans and personal relationships, but how can you contact those people? How can you get them in the fold and how can you adequately thank them? That's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm not sure if we have any questions, but if we don't have questions on that end yet, then I think we'll have time at the end for other ones. Okay. I'm going to give it just a sec. Mel, you can let us know if anything's come in. And I call that a sec. Okay, Nick, <laughs> let's move on to you. Oh, Mel, yeah. Got um, yes, we do. Um, Eli is asking, do you think peer-to-peer -peer fundraising on Facebook is going to grow in popularity now since people can't attend in-person fundraising? Yes. Absolutely. And I know that Nick and Lon have already seen that personally. I've seen that personally. I've seen many more fundraisers either turn their events live. So a lot of organizations are doing 
you know, they were going to do a gala or I know that um, a school where I live, they were going to do their local dance-a-thon live at the school and they couldn't. So they turned it into a Facebook live and they put a donate button on it. They don't actually have a 501c3, but they had a fiscal sponsor put the donate button on it and raise money for them that way. So I, ha I definitely think that it's going to jump in popularity as everybody who hasn't used it before is kind of exploring it. So I 100% I seeing it exploding in popularity. Great. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks, Julia and Mel. Sure. Thank okay, you. Nick, you feel very passionately <laughs> about Facebook and it's grounded in data. So why don't you walk us through some, some of the information that you've got to share today. Thanks, Maureen. Um, so guys, yeah, I think, um, you know, I've been a digital fundraiser since, uh, what, gosh, 2004. And, uh, and I've been doing digital marketing since the very beginning. So uh, this is the platform, this is the fundraising, the digital fundraising platform I dreamed of 10 years ago, right? In fact, it's better than the, the fundraising platform I dreamed of 10 years ago. Um, and I think that we are in an inflection point. I think there is a paradigm shift going on. Uh, I think that was happening before the coronavirus, I think coronavirus is going to accelerate that because right now is that question, the person who asked that question rightly said, you know, peer to peer events, a lot of them have been canceled. A lot of the clients that we're talking to both in the US, the UK, uh, we work in over seven countries are, you know, not, you know, they're panicking a little bit about, about funds, about getting those results in this year. And uh, what we're going to see is a lot of people right now so the, the the first reason on here about why you need to participate is right now everyone's at home right now everyone is on their screens a lot more and we saw this in january in china when it first hit screen time went up 30 percent uh and uh my clients have been measuring this with their facebook ads as well uh, everyone a lot of people are now on their phones at home triple screening at home doing a lot more and so uh, there is actually uh, there is actually a huge opportunity to shift some of your fundraising to online right now. A lot of our clients have had to cut face-to-face -face street fundraising, other forms of fundraising, event fundraising. So right now is the is the time you want to transition to 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 digital. Um, and, and specifically Facebook and the and the some of the reasons why Facebook is such an uh, a game changer. Facebook fundraising tools. The number one for me has to be reduced friction. Okay, we are all radically impatient online. Okay. I remember being in Tokyo, sitting behind a guy, a Japanese guy on a bus and watching him use Facebook in Japanese and watching just how fast he was scrolling through his newsfeed. Okay. And then he'd, he'd pause for a second, open a video. He'd give it about a second before he closed it down and moved on to the next piece of content, right? Everyone, we are so, uh, you know, we're so trained that if we see a form with like a login form, if we see a form with lots of fields on, we don't want to bother to fill it out, right? We're being trained by these amazing user experiences now, not to, not to have to kind of fill in forms and, and do kind of boring stuff. And, and that's what fundraising used to be like. We used to advertise to people and get people to click and leave their current experience and go to this kind of very boring website that is not interactive at all. People don't want to leave the social experience of Facebook, right? They are, they're having a good time. They're socializing with their friends. They're socializing with great content. They don't want to leave that and go to a static form uh, to, and, 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 and produce, get a login for a website they're only going to use twice. And so what Facebook does is it allows them to fundraise within the Facebook experience without having to have a different login, without having to do that. two taps, you can donate two taps. You can set up a fundraiser. You can set up a fundraiser in about 15 seconds. And so the number one thing is reduce friction and guys, Facebook are the best at this. They know their user experience guys. They know how, people behave online. And so they've built a tool for you that you could not build yourself. You couldn't get the tool that they built past your IT guys. It's just not going to work. So, um, so that's why we see it working so well because it's so convenient and easy to use for people. And we all love convenience and easy to use things right now. Uh, the second one is that it's natively inside a social network, right? And it actually, it's historic. It's the first time that we've had a peer-to-peer -peer platform inside a social network, right? It hasn't happened before. Um, 
And so guess what? This is where people are already connected to the people who are going to donate to their fundraiser. They're already connected to their family and friends. And you might see this when someone, if you've ever sort of donated to someone else's birthday, if I donate someone else's birthday, my friends all get a notification in Facebook saying Nick's donated to Johnny's birthday. And, and so it goes, it's inherently viral because it's built inside what's called the social graph. The social graph is just the connections between everyone, like a big spider diagram of everyone's connections on Facebook. And what happens is when one pe person donates or one, one, when someone fundraises, it goes out on that social graph in a kind of viral way. And so the Facebook, Facebook does a lot of the work for you. So previously we had to set up a fundraising page on a separate platform. We then had to take that web address and we had to put it back in social media or send it out an email. Fundraisers don't even have to do that anymore. It's far, far more um, uh, easy than that and more, more powerful. And consequently, we see Facebook fundraising pages raising a lot more than the uh, f fundraising pages on, on third party platforms. So there's a couple of tests that I have where it actually raises double the average fundraising page on Facebook. And that's because it's inside this social graph. Um, and then finally, scale, uh, not finally, but, but the, the second to last point is scale. I mean, this is huge. You've got 244 million people in the USA alone on Facebook, okay? And that's daily active users, not monthly active, not every month, that's every day on Facebook. And, you know, we can talk about the pros and cons of that, the, the fact that perhaps that's not good for our mental health and, and all that kind of thing. But from a fundraising point of view, you have an active audience. You can reach people who are passionate about your cause on Facebook very, very easily. And then finally, and this is one of the big, big things to hit home about why this is such a game changer. You don't have to spend any money on a microsite. You don't have to pay any money for a technology platform. And you don't even have to pay any credit card fees. I mean, it's, they've given to us for free. And my, the way that I think is, yes, Facebook are making a lot out of this, guys. They are they are using us. They are using charities to build up their data for their advertising model, right? Facebook is free. They make money on advertising. That's how their shareholders make, make money. And, and, and they are using charity for that. They, it's great for them to know who's generous, right? They can use that data. They're a data collection company. But my job as a fundraiser is to use them straight back. I'm going to use Facebook to get as much from Facebook as I possibly can, right? I'm going to get as much data uh, uh, about our supporters as I can. I'm going to get as many, as much income in my bank as possible from Facebook. So yes, they use us, but we use them right back. That's our job as a fundraiser. Uh, and so I have made it my mission to help organizations and nonprofits get as much as they can from Facebook. Um, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, next slide. So I, I thought I'd share some benchmarks with you. Um, Facebook fundraising is growing at an exponential rate. So for the first three years, I think it took them about three years to raise uh, uh, 1 billion US dollars. It was then another year uh, before they announced that they raised $2 billion and then it's now $3 billion. So it's kind of an upward graph. A lot of that first wave of, um, of uh, income was from birthday fundraisers, okay? Uh, and uh, so if you are, um, you know, if you're experiencing a lot of uh, Facebook income right now, if you look at Give Panel Clients, we have about 100 clients on our platform. We can look at their data. Uh, about 95% of the income is from Facebook, is from birthday fundraisers. And so that is something that just really matched the Facebook platform. Facebook are fantastic at testing. They do 100 tests a day on their platform. And so they were testing different things for fundraising to see what would work. Birthdays is the thing that really, really took off. But other things are happening now, not just birthdays. Peer-to-peer -peer events, uh, virtual events, challenges, things like that are, are really, really taking off. So we've got a second wave coming um, uh, uh, yeah, that is really, really exciting. Um, I, I said this before, but Facebook fundraisers raise twice as much as other uh, pages on other fundraising platforms. Um, and then an important thing, and this comes down to that reduced friction and how convenient and easy it is. It's Facebook did a study with um, an animal organization and um, uh, they raised 13 times higher conversion rate than the nonprofit website. And it wasn't a bad nonprofit donation page, okay? 13 times higher. So that is just absolutely phenomenal. It's just so easy for people to give, um, so much more easier than going to a separate website where they have to fill in, it, fill in a long form. 
And then finally, Facebook actually asked people like, would you donate again? You know, how was your experience? They did a whole massive survey. Um, a lot of people, so very statistically significant and 88% of people that gave through Facebook said they'd likely to do, to, to give again in, in the future. And that's like, so that's about nine out of 10 people. And, and just so you know, the iPhone is probably the most popular, successful product this planet has ever seen. And still only six out of 10 people say that they say that they, they might buy another one, right? So, so, and that's how, that's considered a high score in the industry. So nearly nine out of 10 people saying they're most likely, that is like basically saying, this was a great experience. This was really fun. I want to keep doing this. This really, you know, ticked a box for me. And so you can, you know, if you're doing Facebook fundraising, you're doing something that your donors and your fundraisers love to do. Uh, do you want to go to the next slide, Maureen? Okay, so this is, uh, Julia touched on this, but I really want to hit home. Guys, there is no point in fighting against what the, the Facebook giving tools. You, you really, it's not great in terms of getting, getting the data for people who give you the actual donation. You're going to get less than 3% of people ticking that box after they make a donation. So Facebook asks every single donor to tick a box to say, I want to hear from the, the, the nonprofit. And they do not pre-tick that box, which is why less than 3% of people tick that box, which is an indication to you that they're not that interested. They were supporting their friends when they gave a donation, not necessarily your cause. And you can't fight against that. Don't try and use Facebook to get the direct donor information. Focus on the people who really, really uh, are the most important people. And that is the people who uh, fundraise for you. So like the super supporters who are going to go out there and ask all their friends and family to donate. They're going to raise hundreds of dollars for you, okay, from five, ten, twenty dollar fundraisers. Most of those, uh, uh, most of the donors um, uh, are actually cold prospects, okay? So you don't actually want to clog up your fundraising database with data from people that aren't good prospects for you anyway. Um, that's something that actually you don't want to pay CRM fees. You don't want to have like extra data hygiene issues. You don't want to have all of that issue from people who aren't going to be good prospects for you over the lifetime of their support. Um, so really fundraisers are the key. And the great thing is, is that we, you can get fundraiser information on Facebook and we, La, Lan's going to show you a project that we did with her, um, where, where she gets that. Now there's a couple of things to say here. The first thing is Facebook, unfortunately, do not, uh, do not pass you the details for Facebook fundraisers. And that is why the myth has gone out that Facebook doesn't give any data. You, but that doesn't stop you collecting the fundraisers information. We have clients who do fundraising campaigns on Facebook where they collect 100% of the, do the information for fundraisers before they set up their fundraising page, okay? We also work with clients like um, uh, Children's Cancer Research Fund to collect the data after someone has set up a fundraiser for you organically. So if someone sets up a birthday fundraiser for you, we can actually go and thank them and ask them to sign up to your organization. And we've seen up to 40% data recruitment on that. And, and, and Lan's going to show you a case study. So the myth is Facebook doesn't share the data with you. The truth is you can get the data. You just need to know how. Okay. That, I love this. I, I'm going to listen to this. Even though I'm on this webinar, I'm going to listen to it again because there's a lot going on here. Mel, did we have any questions come in for Nick before Lon shares her story? We did. Um, one is coming from Melissa, and I think she's referring to the previous slide. So if you want to go back to secret number two, she's asking if it was a 13 times higher conversion rate from oh, a yeah. Facebook post to donation or from the landing uh, page mm -hmm. on the fundraiser page to donation. Did I ask, ask that correctly? I don't know. <laughs> so that I think... I, I like it's a while ago since I, I read the case study, but essentially they Facebook measured Facebook sent 50% of the traffic to um, the organization's website and kept 50% onto Facebook giving tools. It was when Facebook giving tools first launched when Facebook donate first launched and they found out that Facebook donate collected 13 times higher, the higher the amount of donations than the nonprofit website. I hope that makes sense. I can probably dig up the case study somewhere. Um, if you go to actually, if you go to social good, if you, if you type in Facebook social good blog, 
into Google. They've got so many case studies there, by the way, of organizations who are doing it. It's such a great resource. Not many people know about, and it's on there somewhere. I think it was soy dogs, uh, just comes to, comes to mind. Okay. That Wonderful. is awesome. All right, Lon, my friend, let's talk about children's cancer research fund. Yeah. Um, so again, I'm Lon. Um, I'm the community fundraising manager. I oversee all of our third party fundraisers. So that includes kind of all of those offline events along with Facebook fundraising. Um, we started Facebook fundraising as early adopters about three years ago, um, really building our brand presence along with encouraging people to create Facebook fundraisers. I think in the beginning, we actually kind of split our promotions between encouraging people to do Facebook fundraising and then also um, to create a DIY fundraiser on our own website. And then once that admin fee dropped at, uh, within Facebook, we decided to kind of solely focus on that since it actually was just a lot more cost effective for our organization to have people creating Facebook fundraisers. Um, and our stewardship, um, it was really just me. So it was really, really limited to who I could reach out to and the time that I had. So. I was reaching out to our fundraisers that were raising over $500, $500 or more. Um, and that really only equated to about maybe two to 5% of our total fundraisers. Um, and currently um, on Facebook fundraising, you only see people who are active, actively fundraising over $50 or more. Um, it's only a third, you'll only be able to see about a third of your total fundraisers. That's why we decided to partner with GivePanel um, to help us with our stewardship. Um, if you want to take, uh, go to the next slide. Um, this was our three month pilot. We started in November and ended at the end of January and you can see kind of our results. These three months are typically the slowest of like our entire year for Facebook revenue. Um, see that big spike on Giving Tuesday. We had a really incredible Giving Tuesday. We had um, a lot of our, we had just a really big campaign around it. And we worked with Nick to kind of help with that stewardship messaging and also letting people know that Giving Tuesday was happening and Facebook had a huge match and that we wanted them to share with their friends and family about the match. So that's where you see that spike um, and kind of some of those results from the, the three months of our pilot. Um, so our goals for a three month pilot was to thank um, as close to 100% as possible of our fundraisers to gather contact data from um, our Facebook fundraiser that includes physical address and along with email address. And also just kind of help us to enrich our data to make sure that it's um, um, attributed correctly and then also making sure that it's ready to like upload into our CRM system. And then really um, looked at kind of this A-B testing. Um, we tested a series of A-B tests in kind of fast iterations looking at the data, the analytics, and really being fluid about like, let's tweak this, let's tweak that, see what happens um, to really see um, how we move those dials and how that affects um, performance. Next slide, please. So these are some of our um, kind of metrics and results um, for my three months. Um, you'll see that we did thank pretty much 100% of our fundraisers. We had um, about a 17% conversion um, that provided their contact data, and that was kind of a, a quite a growth from where we started off from. And uh, we were really happy with kind of that momentum that we saw there. Um, those people, 74%, opted into our marketing communications, and then. Um, cost per um, donor that we received all data was about a little shy of $11. I'm not sure if you guys um, know what the benchmark is for kind of usable emails, but Blackbot has a benchmark of um, $14.23 as like a usable email address um, based on annual revenue. So kind of through our pilot, we're getting both the physical and email address. So really 1425 is like the minimal value. I haven't really seen any other data um, to show what 
um, an email address and physical address would be. Um, and then just to say that like all those results, you know, I'm not like sifting through these fundraisers, give panels doing all of the work and really the only work um, that it was for me was really contacting give panel to kind of tweak our A-B testing and through our next slide you'll see kind of some of our results from those A-B tests. So our first lesson, oh I feel a sneeze coming on so I'm going to pause, <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> push through but I'm probably going to sneeze soon. Um, so our first A-B test was a gift message so um, of letting people know um, we would love to send you a little token of appreciation. Um, please share your, you know, information with us. And then the other one was just kind of a simple let's keep in touch message. And our token was like a small pin that we give away to kind of our donors. Um, really, you know, it costs less than 50 cents. Um, we just um, send that in the mail along with a little thank you. But as you can see, um, much higher rate of people who wanted that little token. And then go to the next slide. We also tested um, timing of messages, of a morning message versus an afternoon. And you can see um, some people um, preferred the morning message or at least converted um, within that opt-in rate of the morning. And then here are some other learnings. Um, one thing of note is that um, no images on a message actually um, had a better response, which is really contrary to kind of what we've all learned in kind of traditional digital marketing is always having kind of a picture of a cute kid with their thank you sign. Um, but we really found that people um, responded a, a lot more to no images, which, you know, maybe anecdotally is just like more sincere and more personal. Um, and we'll see kind of our results from Giving Tuesday there. And then what's next for us? We actually decided to continue our pilot with GivePanel. Um, we um, just saw so much momentum in that conversion rate. And because that three months is typically a slower time of year for us, we wanted to kind of see like a larger pool of fundraisers um, and it would gain more insight from just um, testing more for a longer period of time. So we're going to be extending our uh, pilot until the end of April. Um, and then we'll also be focusing a little bit more on how we increase our average dollars raised by um, our fundraisers along with kind of those new, message, new messages as well. Excellent, excellent. Um, Mel, I saw a couple questions pop in. What would you like to have Lon answer? Yeah, um, so Vanessa is saying we are a small development shop with a small budget and really can't afford external companies to do the work for us in quotations. What is the best way to do all of this on a limited budget? Yeah, I, I guess I would say um, if you have a limited budget, I'm not sure if you have budget for kind of um, digital marketing. Um, you know, what we do is kind of a combination of working with GivePanel, but we also work on our digital presence and make sure that um, we're growing our brand and building our brand um, in the spaces that we want to be in, like Facebook. So because we were early adopters, we started kind of building that national brand presence around that time as well. Um, so creating um, social organic posts not only asking people to fundraise for you, but also just um, thanking people for being your supporters. You can't really ask every time to fundraise for you. So it's kind of sprinkling in those fundraising messages, but also just talking about your impact, talking about your mission. Um, so I say a balance between um, the digital presence and then also just getting out there and thanking people and getting on their Facebook pages or Facebook fundraising pages and thanking them there. Excellent. Hey, Nick, I bet you want to jump in here. Yeah, I've just got, I've got a couple of points. I think that's a great question. I just want to say that with, um, with Lan, you know, uh, um, Children's Cancer Research Fund get, get a lot of fundraisers. Not every organization gets as many, many fundraisers set up. Um, but we, and so on GivePanel, like we have most of our clients are very, very small and they do it all, all themselves. 
and we provide them with templates and everything. They can just do it, do it themselves using give panel. Um, so that's one thing to say. The other thing to say is that, um, you know, uh, Lon mentioned about like the, the cost per email address from Blackboard. I think like the thing that we've seen across our, um, our, uh, our, our clients is that 90% on average, about 90%, nine out of every 10 fundraisers that fundraise for you are new to your organization. You don't have them already. Right. And so that $10 per, um, contactable person is actually for someone who is new and has already fundraised for you. Okay. That's not the blackboard figure is just an email address, like any old email address cold. Um, this is someone who's already fundraised for you and not isn't on your database. And so, you know, however you do it, however you message them, however you get the data, just they're such valuable um, uh, people for you. I think just just figure out a way to do it. A give panel, like I said, we have a self service. Like most of our clients are small and self service, or just do it through face. Just do it through Facebook. Just do it manually, right? Just download your transaction report. Work out who's fundraised for you. It's a pain without give panel. But if you haven't got the budget, you haven't got the budget, but do it because these people are like, they're new, they're interested in what you do. And they're basically like, you know, you haven't paid any media costs to get them. Facebook have done the work getting them for you. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to say that, you know, the people that we're gathering this data from, what we're really excited about is all of these people have opted in. They know that they are adding information and they want to be part of your group. So we are not expecting people to opt out at this point and that um, it's really clean and clean data that people want to be part of um, and part of our mission and, and our work. Awesome. Awesome. The one thing I'll add before we switch gears is that you might be able to look around inside your organization's annual budget right now and look at things that aren't going to happen. You know, maybe you've got a gala, you haven't spent money on that. It was supposed to be in June and you might say, we're not going to do it this year. Let's repurpose a little bit of that money to raising money a different way than traditionally at our gala. It's a different scale, but, but think about that. You might have the ability to be flexible these days. Okay. So this is all great stuff. <laughs> it's all really helpful, but how do you do it inside your organization? How do you actually take all this stuff and operationalize it? Next secret is to shift your mindset. As you've heard from everybody today, it is critical that you don't think about Facebook fundraising like you think about direct response, like you think about your donation form on your website. It's a completely different mindset. And that means you've got to learn how to do things differently. It's not easy. Many of us, no matter how long you've been doing this stuff, Nick talked about how long he's been doing digital marketing and, and fundraising. We have ways <laughs> that we do things. And this really means a paradigm shift. And if you can start in a small way to prove your concept, it's often better than going in completely big bang. So some questions that you might need to ask yourselves internally amongst your team, how do we move ahead with that experimental frame? If I know that I send out this direct response campaign, it costs me X, I'm generally going to raise Y. You don't have those numbers until you start. So I would start with that experimental frame. Identify who's going to own this inside your organization. If you've got a, a larger org or even a, a smaller organization where you've got the marketing team and you've got the fundraising team and then you've got the social media team, who's actually going to drive this and own it and do the follow-up stuff? And then how do we justify the investment of time and money? Now, if, if we're not living in a time that says, you got to try new things. I don't know what time we're going to live in that um, would make it easier for us to experiment. It's really important to bring the rest of your team along though, right? It's, it's one thing to be um, evangelized from a webinar like this, write up a plan, be all ready to go, but you do have to do this collaboratively. And that's always how you're going to get the best results anyway, is if you're not um, doing this all on your own, you've got support above you and around you. So you've got to loop in your leadership. If your organization is 
either a tech forward or a tech neutral culture, it's going to be pretty easy for you to get buy in. But if you're working with a culture or leadership or a board that is very tech resistant, they have stuff that they made up or that they read somewhere five years ago that's influencing their decision making today. So your number one job is to dispel those myths about social fundraising and get the green light to give it a try. Again, you got to make agreements about roles and responsibilities up front. You have to make an actual plan. You can't just say, yeah, we're going to try this. It's a campaign plan like any other campaign plan that you would be putting together, executing, monitoring, and adjusting. I think that's really important. What Lon shared is that they tweaked along the way. This is not a set it and forget it thing. And don't let the perfect get in the way of the good. We all do this unless I can really think it through and totally know what my return on investment is going to be. I can't do it. And that is not helping you right now. It's actually hurting you. So good is good. And doing it, even if it's bumpy and maybe not perfect, is a million times better than sitting around and polishing something before you let it go out into the world. Mel, got any questions that came in for me in this section? None that I can see so far, unfortunately. Um, no problem. We'll just maybe give it a couple more seconds. Sure. I want to share while we're waiting for questions to come in. I, I've worked with VH1 Save the Music Foundation. Awesome organization. They've got the name, right? VH1 Save the Music, but there are three people working in their fundraising team. Three. Um, and I want to show you this example of how they're promoting it. You could have the best thing in the world. You can build it, but if you're not promoting it, nobody's going to know about it. Facebook certainly will let me know if Julia starts a birthday fundraiser and I can choose to contribute or not, but you've got some marketing to do here too. And this is like a little cut up version of Save the Music's fundraiser page. You can see on the left hand side, they've got very minimal navigation, right? How we work, why music, take action, donate, and then fundraise has taken the golden position. <laughs> that upper right hand corner of your website is gold in terms of eye movement. So they've actually prioritized fundraising over straight up donations. So think about that. When you click the fundraise button, you get taken to a very simple page that gives people a couple of steps. Step one, you got to set up your fundraiser. Very easy, super simple. Uh, a click of the button if, they, if somebody needs tips, it takes you to another page with FAQs. And then the second step is customizing your fundraiser, saying a little bit about how to do that. And then when someone clicks fundraiser tools, it takes that person right to Save the Music Foundation's Facebook fundraiser page with them already selected, ready to go. And then the, the right-hand photo, I think is really important to share with everybody today too. Give some ideas. Um, they've only got three um, different ways that they're promoting this. And they also have a person. So where it says still have questions, contact us, brings you to a form that goes to a real human person who monitors those um, form submissions and writes back to people. And I think that this is all about the social aspect of fundraising. And if you want your donors or supporters to move into Facebook and raise money on your behalf, you have to support them, make it easy for them to do it and really be there for them as they're making this transition from straight up giving to raising money for you in this way. Okay, Julia, <laughs> hello. Julia has been waiting patiently. Sure. Julia, let's, let's get you to share some super secret tips and trends for 2020. I'm keeping my eye on the clock. We're doing great on time. Um, so in terms of, um, predictions. I mean, these are predictions that we really came up with as a group. Um, but for me specifically, and I know that we're all in agreement on this, 
we've really seen a ramp up in digital fundraising and even in just the last week. So even just inquiries, people trying to find information about it, people trying to set it up, people asking me how to do it, what are some best practices. So I really expect to see this being ramped up, not just around birthdays, around other causes. And what I've seen is that giving is changing dramatically. So I've seen a lot of articles and studies coming out saying that people are still giving even in this uncertain time, but they're giving exactly the way they want to. So they're not giving in traditional ways, especially younger generations. They're giving in reaction to things that are in the news or something their friend tells them to donate to or something that they um, have heard about from a family member. So they're giving in different ways and they're hearing about causes in different ways. So I think that's going to really impact Facebook fundraising as well and increase it. And we can't get around the fact that there are specific criteria that do work well in terms of digital fundraising, especially, but it's specific, timely, and relevant asks. So why this? Why now? Why am I paying attention? Um, I'm mostly paying attention because a friend has asked me, or maybe I want to start a fundraiser because I'm feeling like I need to contribute. I need to give back. Giving is a way for people to take personal agency. It's a way for them really to feel control in uncertain times, even if they are giving $5 or $10. So Yes, giving overall does go down in a recession. Giving overall does go down in an international crisis, but it definitely is going, it's not going to stop. It won't stop. So what I want to impart to anyone on this webinar today is, you know, first of all, go with your gut. You know your audience. You know it's going to work best for your audience and your donors, but don't stop fundraising and don't be scared to start Facebook fundraising now when you have a specific timely and relevant and urgent ask because people do want to help they want to participate they want to be part of the solution nick want to weigh in here what are your predictions beyond 2020 yeah um do we have a slide for that <laughs> I don't I think, think we so. do. I think this oh, is a slide. Okay. okay, so so my feeling my feeling is um, that eventually the truth will out in and mm -hmm. Facebook fundraising uh, organizations will get on. We're already seeing huge numbers of uh, charities continuing to onboard onto Facebook giving tools because they don't want to miss they realize that they have to be part of it. Um, so I think that will happen. I think because of that, the share of birthday fundraisers is going to get less. Birthday fundraising will still be massive. Um, you talk to the average person on the street, they don't even know what a Facebook birthday fundraiser is, right? So like I, I calculated it as something like still 2.2 .2 billion people on Facebook have still not done a birthday fundraiser. So it's, ma it's still huge. But the fact is that more organizations will be getting on it. So the slices of the pie will get smaller. So, you know, if you were an arthritis charity and you got on it early or like Lan got on it early, you've made hay while the sun's been shining, but that's every day you're losing that window of opportunity. So that's my feeling. Uh, and then we're going to see the second wave. We're going to see second wave of an innovation on top of Facebook fundraisers, where it's not just Facebook doing the work, sending us organic birthday fundraisers. And by organic, I mean, you have charities haven't paid any media to get it. It's just organically happened. You turn on the tools and the magic money gets drop, dropped off on your doorstep by the stalk. And you know, that's, that's like, it's like magic money right now. But that's going to shift to people working out how to do peer-to-peer -peer on Facebook, organizations pioneering. We're pioneering some exciting stuff around virtual events right now. I can't tell too much about it, but it is working extremely, extremely well. I've got an ebook coming out. Just plug that quickly about this virtual event thing. So get in touch with me if you want to know more. But, but essentially, how you can use Facebook tools, not just the Facebook fundraising tools, but how you add up Facebook ads, groups, right? All these different tools are coming together to form something incredibly exciting to get your supporters to do something for your cause. And I think that, you know, Facebook, for me, digital is now Facebook, right? Like it's, that's the way it's gone. It's swallowing things. And so that's going to happen more and more. It's aggregation theory. I don't have time to go into it, but it's going to happen more and more. So get on the train people before <laughs> You, you wish, you know, you're going to do it in a year anyway, so you might as well do it now. Choo-choo. Lon, 
from where you sit, I'd love to hear any predictions that you've got or tips before we turn into the open Q&A part. Yeah, I would say for us, it is kind of what Nick said is seeing kind of the Facebook birthday pie get a little smaller and then kind of more general um, DIY fundraising happening on Facebook grow. Uh, we already saw that happen um, for us in the last couple months. Um, and I think a lot of it, um, we talked as a group yesterday, we talked about how it might be because we were early adopters. We've seen two cycles of maybe some of the same mm -hmm. supporters donating their birthdays and now they're on to a different charity. Um, so that's okay. Um, seeing the turn is probably really natural. Um, so that's kind of the biggest thing I think I'll see. Excellent, thank you, thank you. Okay, open Q&A time, Mel. It's yes. all you. Why don't you there start are, zipping our pals their questions? There are tons of questions. Um, so we'll start it off. I'll just kind of go chronologically as they came in. Um, so Dylan is asking, um, he says, Facebook fundraising sounds dreamy. Well, I can't really uh, disagree with him there. <laughs> but um, he says, but I had thought that Canadian charities are not eligible. Am I missing something? I can answer that one really quickly. Um, Facebook partnered with PayPal to launch Facebook giving tools in Canada. Uh, most, the most effective way of having pay, uh, Facebook giving tools is through Facebook payments. That's what most US and European organizations have. Unfortunately, with, um, with the PayPal integration, you don't get the full suite of tools. There's a few things missing. Uh, all your reporting comes through PayPal, not through Facebook. Um, so it's kind of like a junior, not very good version of the Facebook giving tools, unfortunately. My recommendation is to get as many contacts of your nonprofits in Canada together and ask Facebook for the real thing. That's what we do with Canadian organizations that approach us. But yes, you can, people can set up a fundraiser for you in Canada if you're part of the PayPal giving fund. That's great. I actually didn't know that. So we're all learning something today. <laughs> all right. So the next question comes in from Patty and she's saying, I don't understand how you can get data from Facebook fundraisers since they do not ask each donor to leave their info. Shall I answer that one quickly? Yeah, please do. L Lauren, do you want to answer? I mean, like there's two ways, basically. It's really, really simple. The first is if it's an organic fundraiser, so it's just come in, it's just a birthday fundraiser that's just come in for you, we can post a message on their fundraising page and say, thank you, fundraiser, so much for fundraising for us. We'd love to send you something in the post. Click here. And GivePanel has a dynamic form that collects that data and matches it against the Facebook fundraising data so you know who that person is. We, you can get up to 40, uh, the best, we're looking at 40% right now. Um, uh, uh, at the data collection. We're not quite there with, with, with LAN, but we will get there. Um, and so, so that's the number one way. So 40% of organic fundraisers that way. The other way is if you do a campaign, you're going to be asking fundraisers to register first before they set up their fundraiser. And so in that way, you're going to uh, collect 100% of the, that that, um, that donation. We've just launched a registration form that links together the registration with the Facebook fundraiser collection process. So that's part of the give panel tool as well. Great. Thank you for that. All right. So the next question is coming in from Chris and I believe this is when uh, Lon was talking. Um, he's asking, how did you get buy-in from your upper management team? Yeah, um, so three years ago when we um, decided to be early adopters, I had not been hired yet, but I can say that our um, management um, were curious about it. Um, they weren't fully receptive and our board was not um, on board with it. Um, they really wanted a lot of data. They wanted a lot of success, like understanding how people are successful in the space. We didn't have that. It was really my team, the digital mark or the um, marketing team pushed and advocated really, really hard and said, we might not be able to get a lot of donor data, but let's, we want to be able to figure it out. Give us a year. Um, and then let's talk about it again in a year. So, um, you know, we, We've been at it for um, about three years. This last year, we raised about $1.5 million in Facebook fundraising. So we really 
proven that it can be a, you know, a successful and sustainable stream of revenue for our organization. And now they're just all, I mean, of course, now they're all on board, but, <laughs> but you really have to advocate hard and be okay with a little bit of the unknowns. Obviously, now there's a lot of organizations that have proven a lot of success in it. Um, being able to have Facebook API with some of their physical peer-to-peer -peer events um, and seeing exponential growth from, from that. But just in general, um, they have to have some trust in you. And now there's so many you know, partners and tools that can help you steward these donors a lot better, or steward these fundraisers a lot better like your panel. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thank you for that, Lon. Um, so we're running out of time. We probably have a, enough time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, another one is coming in from Christopher. He says, where can we find good examples websites or companies of how to set up an efficient campaign plan. Um, he says for it's a, for a small company with one person doing all the work. Julia, I bet this is you. Um, examples of a plan. Well, I mean, I, I have a lot of information on my blog and also there's a lot on the give panel. If you go to givepanel.com, their blog, and they also have a lot of case studies that they've done. There's also, so I would go to givepanel.com um, and look at their case studies. I would go to my website, jcsocialmarketing.com. I'm right more about strategy and planning. And then also um, on the Facebook charitable giving tools website, they have case studies there. So what I would do is just look at the case studies, see which one matches closely like closest to your organization and just you know bite off what you can chew right now if you're a really small organization so kind of keep it step by step by step by step um an action plan so i don't know nick i know you have a lot of examples on your on your website right you've got case studies yeah, sure. Yeah, there's a lot of free resources on our on our site, and like you said, yeah. the Facebook ones. Those are the, those are two big ones for this subject for sure. Yeah, that's where I would start. Perfect. Well, thank you, everyone, and I'm my apologies in advance that we're not able to get all to all of those wonderful questions. So um, either email them to any of our panelists that we have, and we'd be happy to answer them for you. Um, and with that, um, I think that will just conclude our session for the day. We're running out of time, so so sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for all of your thoughtful questions and all of the learnings today. Um, I don't know ev about everyone else, but I actually found that a very informative session. So thank you all to you for. Um, just a reminder that our next session will start at 10.30 a.m. today, PST, or 1.30 p.m. EST today. Um, and that is probably in about 25 minutes or so. So um, this session will be led by Najid Kassam, Kate Vanelli, and Justin Walker. And they'll be talking on searching for wild data in your da donor database, how mm -hmm. AI is the best safari guide. <laughs> and yeah, great. I love that. Uh, yeah, it's pretty great. Um, so thanks again, everyone. See you soon. And I don't know if you guys wanted to sign off with any last uh, comments, but yeah. Um, just that um, people can email me any questions. I can see quite a few unanswered questions. If they want to email me, just nick at givepanel.com. I'm happy to receive emails from anyone. Perfect. Julie, how about you? Hang in there, everyone. You're doing great. <laughs> you can do this. We're all in this together. Um, you're doing awesome work. So you can email me, tweet at me, contact me. But um, I just want to say, you know, hang in there. We've got this. Mm -hmm. Lon. Be creative. This is the time where you have a lot of white space for your organization. Push your innovative thoughts and use your voice and um, continue to talk about your impact and mission. And uh, you can find out more about me. Uh, the contact information is here. I'm also happy to answer any questions about how to get buy-in and how to deal with the technology and the roles and responsibilities so it makes sense to you and your team. Um, this has been great, Mel and Samantha. Thanks so much for inviting us here. Uh, Teal is an awesome company, and it's clear you're doing great work in the world. So thank you. And same to you all. Thank you so much. And Bye, everybody. have a wonderful rest of your day.
Bye.